How you doing, Mr. Obama? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. We wanted to, to call up and, and answer it personally. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a few questions. Um, first of all, I just want to say congratulations on everything. You know, we really, really campaign hard for you. And we're glad that you was able to pull out the victory, you know? Thanks so much for the great work you've been doing. You're welcome, sir. You're definitely welcome. I'm sorry, who'd you say you were? Fella. I'm sorry, who'd you say you were? Fella. Okay. All right, so let's start this off, man. First question I got for you. I heard there was a little incident with you and Joe Biden at the um, Burger King the other day. There was a little incident where he tried to eat your, was it your burger or something? And you said to him, what did you say to him? Get your hands out of my fries. You ain't my bitch, nigga. Huh? You said that? Yes. You really said that? Yes. Like, really? Yes. Wow. That's crazy, but like, well, why Why did you have to get so upset at him? Like, he just wanted some fries. Buy your own damn fries. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, the next question I have for you, me being, of course, of African descent, just like yourself, um, how, how does that affect you as a person, you know, being over here in America and now being a president of the United States, how do you feel this is going to, you're going to be able to help people out in Africa and how do you think, you know, like people from Africa come over here and do such great things and expand and, you know, like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Africa is the cesspool of the world. What? Say that again? Africa is the cesspool of the world. Um, Mr. Obama, I don't think you want to say that. You want to tell the story or you're going to let me finish? I mean, I'll let you tell the story, but you can't say stuff like that, man. Like, that's not cool. Like, we'll go from there. Like, you think that's okay to say that? Yes. Wow. Okay. So, um, actually, I heard you were in D.C. the other day and you had a chance to, um, stop by Love Nightclub and what did you think about Love Nightclub? You know what I mean? I heard... There was a little incident with you and some guys where, like, your security had to, like, fight some people off. Or what were they doing to you? Like, what was the problem? Maybe we could afford to give the badass nigger pose a rest. Okay, okay. I agree. I definitely agree with that one. I think uh, we need to chill on the posing and all that. You know what I mean? Have a good time. Yes. So, um... I mean, I know you and John McCain, you squashed everything. It seems like he's happy for you. You're happy for him. So, um, what are your true, true feelings on Mr. John McCain? Sorry, that motherfucker got nothing on me, right? Whoa, Mr. Obama, like, I don't know what's going on, but some of these answers are out of control. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to post this interview on my blog. Like, you really got to tone it down, man. So what are you saying? I'm saying you gotta just tone it down just a little bit, you know what I mean? What do you mean? <laughs> you gotta like answer these questions just a little bit better. Like you can't just be so blatantly honest with people, you know? Like you're a politician now, you know? We're not just chilling on the block. You can't just answer questions the way you wanna answer them, you know what I mean? There are white folks and then there are ignorant motherfuckers like you. Huh? Ignorant motherfucker. And your mother was begging Barack to stop. What? You don't understand. Actually, I do understand. I understand that, you know, you're a real cool guy, you're humble, you're down to earth, and you're honest, but now you're in office, you can't just talk like that. Like, we elected you to be president, and as president, you gotta, like, bite your tongue a little bit. You can't just say whatever you want to say, you know? And you can't just do whatever you want to do. Trying to get laid. Whoa, <laughs> Mr. Obama, like, this is really getting out of control. Out of control, man. So, um, Michelle Obama, your wife, beautiful lady, you know what I mean, about to be the first black first lady ever in the history of the United States. Like, I heard there was a little incident also with her where, you know, there was a little problem with some guys, you know, talking to her and, like, trying to maybe get at her. And I definitely think that was inappropriate. And I, I apologize on behalf of my fellow 
black brothers, but what did you tell her? Like, how were you able to console her? You know what I mean? Maybe they're looking at that big butt of yours. Well, <laughs> Mr. Obama, like, you're really getting out of control now, man. That's what you told her? What else did you say? Don't be thick, all right? It, she can't help that she's thick, Mr. Obama. Like, that's why you decided to marry her. I'm sure it was one of the reasons. Yes. Okay, then. So, don't get mad at her for it, you know what I mean? And what do you think about George W. Bush? I gotta ask you that. Now, you know that guy ain't shit. <laughs> okay, I agree, I agree. I want to double back real quick to um, the Michelle Obama question. Like, I know you met her, and there was like... You guys were going out and you separated for a little while, like similar to Jay-Z and Beyonce, like you separated for a little bit and then got back together. But when you se when you separated, like what caused that? What happened? Everything was going good and then... Next thing I know, she's hooked up with Steve No Neck Yamaguchi. Two of them are holding hands and shit like a couple of lovebirds. Okay. I can see why you'd be upset with her for that, but you know what I mean? Like, where did you, where did you see them? At a local Waikiki bar. Okay, so you storm out of the bar, you're angry, and then where did you go after that? Bullshit put on parties. So, um, you broke up with her because of that? Well, why not? I mean, wouldn't you just, like, try to get a story from her first and try to find out, you know, you're all supposed to be president and be rational, so wouldn't you try to, like, talk to her and find out why she was with the guy holding his hand, like... I mean, just ask her something and get her answer and see what she says first before you break up with her? Bullshit. Huh? Bullshit. What? Bullshit. Did you really just say that to me? I mean it this time. Mr. Obama, like, I'm really, 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 really glad to meet you, but some of these things you're saying are just, like, out of control, you know what I mean? Why are you worrying about such talk? I'm worried because if this gets out to the media, it might sort of hinder the way they look at you. And I don't want to do that. I don't want my interview to be the reason the media looks at you funny. So you might want to just take some of these answers back and maybe let's bring it back just a little bit. What do you think? You have some good ideas. Maybe if you join the church, you could help us start a community program. Why don't you come by on Sunday? Okay, I can do that. Sunday, I can do that. So, um, tell me a little bit about high school. How was that for you? I spent the last two years of high school in the days. Why was that? I discovered that it didn't make any difference whether you smoked reefer in the white classmate's sparkling new van, or in the dorm room with some brother you'd met down at the gym, or on the beach with a couple of Hawaiian kids who had dropped out of school and now spent most of their time looking for an excuse to brawl. Well, Mr. Obama, I think that's all the questions I'm going to ask you. So, do you have any final words for the people? Yeah, that's what you said the last time. you have any final words for the people? Well, fucking ask them all. Whoa. This is not so hot anyway.